G'day football fans and welcome back to episode 4 of this Wolves Let's Play here on Dylan on the Ball. My name is Dylan and we are today playing up against Aston Villa. Someone around where we want to be, um, hopefully finishing uh, sort of top half, 7-8 sort of uh, range. And they're also a local rival here uh, in the Midlands of uh, in England. But before we get to today's game, we do have a number of games to catch up on, so I will get through them quickly here. Let's go. So first we were up against uh, Watford away. We got a good start very early on here. Three minutes in, Jao Matinho being played through by Pedro Neto, cutting in off the right just like we planned it. Good run through from Jao Matinho with the most awkward of finishes possible, and it is 1-0. Not long after, a similar looking goal to Trinchao against Birmingham. Raul Jimenez brings the ball away from the box, drawing in the defender, leaving the open man out on the right in Pedro Neto, who takes one touch and a little bit of a deflection, but it did count as a Pedro Neto goal, so we take those. It got even better from there. A uh, bit of a counter-attack here. Huang puts in the cross. Pedro Neto, easiest of jobs. Puts his left foot through the ball, and it is, would you believe it, Wolves 3, Watford 0. But that wasn't all. Very quickly thereafter, Pedro Neto gets put through again, this time by Ruben Neves. Fires it in the near top corner. For 4-0, and a hat-trick for Pedro Neto. Who, who would have thought it? It was a game we did dominate for 75 minutes, but Watford decided that that was the point where they would try and uh, actually get some uh, forward play happening, and uh, Kuchka got himself forward there. Nice little overlapping run off the side of, I think that was Madisi where he maybe ran off there? I'm not too sure. Good finish. Uh, they just had the extra man forward, and, uh, and we couldn't stop him. 4-1 it finished. Good to get three points on the board. Next up, we were at home against Brentford, and as you see here, clearance from a corner, not quite getting too far away. Ross Barkley with the header back in. Strong, strong win in the air from Ross Barkley. Raul Jimenez with one touch. On the turn, he fires it past keeper into the bottom corner, and uh, it's 1-0. Even better from there, we had Ross Barkley grabbing his first goal for the club. Uh, a great little cross there from the right back Johnny, uh, making a good uh, run through there on the, uh, I guess you could call it an inverted run, on the inside of the winger. And a great finish low to the right of the keeper, and we got ourselves another three, big three points in the Premier League, and our first clean sheet. Love to see it. Next up we had a familiar foe in the uh, Carabao Cup this time, it was Leicester. Uh, of course, our first episode, or second episode, I guess, our first match uh, was against Leicester in the league. Ended 4-0 on that occasion. This time, it was Jao Matinho sprinting through and making it 1-0 nice and early. Would you believe it? We thought luck was on our side when uh, the side of Johnny Evans' face gave us a 2-0 uh, lead there. Nice bit of play, we didn't uh, try to force anything, and then, of course, a shot from the edge of the box, Raul Jimenez on his weak foot wasn't going anywhere near the goal, but uh, but Johnny Evans helped us out there. Unfortunately, half an hour in, Jamie Vardy scored possibly the least Jamie Vardy goal you will ever see, uh, turning his man, which was a great turn, Willy Bolly committed too quickly, uh, was easily turned, and then Jamie Vardy with the most sumptuous of little... Finesse finishes into the far top corner before he grabbed himself another. Max Kilman, for whatever reason, could not quite get there. I, I don't think I've ever been quite as angry as watching Max Kilman fail to intercept that pass despite having absolutely the easier route to it and, and, and had the leg up on Vardy, the absolute prick. Unfortunately, in the cup, that does mean it goes through to penalties, and as you see here, we did not come out on top there. Carlos Vela hitting the winning penalty here. Uh, we missed two. They were both just absolute great saves right in the top corner from Casper Smeichel. And that's the end of our Carabao Cup run. 
We then return to the league up against Southampton away. Ross Barkley grabbing a goal, his second uh, in two games for himself. Uh, nice little back heel assist there from Yusuf Poulsen and Pedro Neto I don't know, running a decoy to try and put off the keeper maybe before Ross Barkley uh, fires that one to the far corner for 1-0 and everything was happy as Larry. We thought we were in for another three points before uh, Broja on loan from Chelsea gets himself a goal. Gineppo did all of the hard work, drew in three of our players before just laying it off for an easy finish. Not sure why Neves didn't try and put it in a challenge. And they completed the turnaround just after 80 minutes. It was Brozier again, the Chelsea Loney, absolutely killing us there. Again, three people get drawn to the one ball. They play a smart pass backwards and then play through Brozier to take the lead. And just to show you how that game sort of transpired, as you can see, we were probably the better side. Didn't quite work out, unfortunately. Then in my anger of... Uh, losing both in the cup and in the league, I forgot to watch the highlights at the end of the game. So here is the live goal scoring of us taking a 1-0 lead, Raul Jimenez, against Newcastle United. Again, we saw no way through there. We found a route back and then played a good through ball and a nice finish into the roof of the net from Raul Jimenez getting himself another goal. And that was 1-0. It got better again from there, as you see here, no route forward there, no one in the box, so we came back. Raul Jimenez plays it back to Matasiwa, plays it out to the left to Marcel. Raul Jimenez starts his run late and has the easiest of finishes. Maybe the keeper could have done something about the cross, um, but it, it, it was, you know, fairly uh, fired across there, so maybe we'll give him a pass on that one, or at least I will, because I'm absolutely laughing all the way to the bank. Has that made it 2-0? Dylan on the ball there, happy as can be. Again, even better again. Moutinho playing it through for Pedro Neto, who has the easy task of firing it into the bottom corner. Very similar goal to, again, the Trinchao against Birmingham and then uh, Neto earlier in this video. Just drawing in that last defender, then playing it out to the wide man who has the job of taking one touch. As you can see, I'm bringing on Dendonka there, which may become relevant soon. Firing it in beautifully there. We take those and a 3 0 lead. Then, basically, straight from kickoff, Matinho through again, just about on side Dendonka with his first touch. He's made it 4 0. He's playing in a more advanced role than he would normally play. He, uh, Matt Seawood was on in defensive mid here as Matinho walks through the advertising hoardings. Dendonka had pressed up high, then we ended up winning the ball behind him. Easy as can be, little two sweet passes, nice and easy. Putting in Dendonka, puts his foot through the ball and makes it 4-0. Though it wasn't to be another clean sheet here as looked just about offside, didn't he, St. Maximan? But he did go through and as you can see, I was not happy with that. Skipped it straight to the menu and 4-1 it finished. That brings us to, that does bring us to 12 points from seven games, though if we do win today against Aston Villa, that takes us up to 15 point, points, which is equal with fourth. So all of the uh, all of the drama and all of the action surrounding our two 4-0 losses starting to not look too bad uh, as we're just about in a, in a challenge for Europe. Taking a look at the lineups just before we kick off here, and we do have a couple of changes for our lineup, just some tired players. So we've brought in Marcel, Roman Seiss, and Daniel Podence for, for Huang Aitnuri and Max Kilman. For Aston Villa, I think you could probably say it's just about exactly what you'd expect, uh, just with the addition of uh, Remo Freuler from, I was gonna say Atalanta, but then I'm trying to remember what they're called in FIFA. I think it's Bergamo Calcio. This is my first time going up against a Steven Gerrard-led Aston Villa in the game. Hopefully we get a good insight into his tactics. I know uh, he did have a lot of success out in Scotland with Rangers, and he's not had a horrible start in England here, but obviously with the quality of teams around them, uh, it's never going to go completely smoothly. Great to see Coutinho back in the Premier League, absolutely killing the game. 
it's lovely, lovely to see him back when he was at Liverpool in his prime was an absolute different beast. It was something you really enjoy watching. Let's hope he's more like the Bayern Munich Coutinho, maybe, or possibly just the Coutinho that went to Barcelona and did absolutely nothing. Let's get going. So welcome to Villa Park here for this Premier League fixture, a local derby between Aston Villa and Wolverhampton Wanderers, our absolute gun of a side. While they are walking out, I will just remind you, please do leave a like. Uh, comment down below if you did like those highlights in the Newcastle game a bit more than the usual style. Uh, I know it was something different. It wasn't completely intentional. It was just because I was fueled by rage and trying to skip through until I could stop recording, basically. But here we are. Should be a fairly even contest this, two sides hoping to break into around the, the top 7-8 sort of clubs. Aston Villa using their Jack Grealish money to hopefully uh, bolster their squad a bit and really push for even higher than that. As Danny Ings is through here doing nothing. Okay, we're fine. I do really like John McGinn. Uh, I was thinking about uh, the point coming where we do have to replace... Uh, Jean Moutinho because he has just turned 35 uh, and I was thinking about players that could replace him John McGinn was actually one of those thoughts um, I don't know how realistic that would be but that was one of my main or first thoughts rather as we've got an early corner here well one forward there by Roman Sais so it's as a classic FIFA tackle uh, it either goes to one of their players, or it goes out for a throw-in. As we've got Daniel Podence out in a good wide position, and a nice overlapping run from Marcel brought in to the side. Oh, and fired wide. Good early play here. Love to see it more than we conjured up against United in the last video. Hopefully we can keep this up. Just countering against a good attack that they had resulted in a cross that Semedo was able to head her away. We've got Potence out free on the left here. He's going to have a shot. Oh, good save from Emmy Martinez. Uh, what I was going to say before that broke into a nice attack was I'm just really hopeful of a clean sheet in a video. That would be absolutely smashing as we get a good view there of the save from Emmy Martinez in the bottom corner. Corner whipping in here from Pedro Neto headed away easily as you will find a lot of times in FIFA. But it's 1-0. We've taken the lead. We've taken the lead in a video. Raul Jimenez at the back post, towering over Matty Cash. The second ball in there from uh, Ruben Neves after the corner. Emi Martinez with a valiant effort there to try and keep that one out. But from that distance, not a whole lot he could do once Raul Jimenez put that much power on it and put it enough to the side of him that he just wasn't able to parry it away. 1-0 to the Wolves in the big derby, and we are happy as can be. Four goals for Raul Jimenez this season. He's been an absolute stud. Well defended there from Connor Cody as uh, Felipe Coutinho broke into the box for the first time. They haven't had too many attacks, though. Uh, every time I do talk in that sort of manner about any of their attacks. Typically they do score shortly thereafter, so hopefully we do defend this corner well. Or we don't have to, and Jose Sar gets there. Though he hasn't... he could have probably caught that, and it's maybe kept us in, under a bit of pressure... as Sace clears the ball, and we're good. Here we go. We are controlling the game well here, and they have only had, uh, I guess, probably a, a couple of uh, times that they've broke forward into the box. But I think we have, as a on a whole, I guess, defended well and kept them at bay well, and attacked well. It bizarre to see. As we approach half time here, I will just remind you, please, again, uh, please leave a like, follow the socials, uh, comment down below. Uh, if you think that John McGinn option uh, is a realistic one or a good option. Uh, and if you don't... Oh, Gio Martino again. That's not the first time he's broke through like that. We did see that uh, in a couple of the, the highlight packages earlier. That he does like that uh, breaking through run. And this time it's, uh, it's a good save from Emi Martinez. 
cannoning off the bar. Uh, as I was saying, uh, please do, yeah, let me know if you think uh, John McGinn is a, a realistic option or if you think he'd be a good fit for what we are doing with our centre mids. Um, as you saw again there, uh, the centre mid, uh, it was Moutinho on that occasion. This occasion, it's Neves. Oh, another save from Emmy Martinez as we are all over them here in this first half. But at half time, we've taken a 1 0 lead and absolutely dominated them. You'd love to see it. I, my confidence is sky high. Everybody was doubting whether I could actually play the game or whether I, in the highlight games, was giving the controller to my big brother who's much better at the game or something like that. God, I hope we don't absolutely blow this second half after I talked it up like that. Jesus. I would look like an absolute mug. And I think the season would then start looking a bit like Everton's or something like that in real life. As, as again, we're winning the ball high up the pitch. Oh, and almost putting Raul Jimenez through. Yeah, we've won the ball high up the pitch on a number of occasions this game, and I think that might be what has been key in dominating so far. And, you know, I'm, I try to not be uh, biased towards this, though maybe I have been a couple of times. Um, but I do think it is probably fair to say that dominated is the word. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if Jose Sar has had a save to make, and we know that Emi Martinez has, as he's going to be required here again. Oh, dear. Should have been required. We've gone for the near post finish, like Pedro Neto against Watford when he got his hat trick. Not to be, Giammatinho. Maybe we need someone like a John McGinn a bit sooner who can finish. That's not fair, he has got a couple of goals already this season as we're around the side here of Luca Dean with Pedro Neto. Cut it back on this left, see if we can pass it in. And Neves on the edge of the box, can't finish either with his weak foot. I guess you can sort of excuse that one a little bit more. It's coming across him to his weak foot, probably goes through his foot a bit there. Daniel Podens is uh, in his way and confusing the hell out of everyone. Probably not really an excuse to miss it that badly. But uh, we'll go easy this time. Oh, as, ne as Jimenez broke into the box again, but this time just can't get away from Ezri Konza. Which, as I was saying in the... F I think it was in the first episode, uh, when I was uh, discussing some of the players, discussing the squad and, and, and what we might need and who we might get rid of. Ezri Konza is one of those names. It's just a great name. It's just got great sounds and... Uh, thousand things as Pedro Neto breaks in and it's 2-0 Ezri Konza, great name not a great defender, he has conceded a second goal this game our Wolverhampton Wanderers are up 2-0 Europe, here we come Moutinho broke into the box, gave it back to Pedro Neto who takes it away from Ezri Konza onto his better left foot fires it towards the side netting Emi Martinez this time cannot do anything and there are our Portuguese boys and Marcel celebrating a 2-0 lead away at Aston Villa in a recorded video. Oh, and we're through here again. It's Pedro Neto firing it towards Raul Jimenez for 3-0. One after the other. As FIFA forgets how to let my players celebrate. Okay, so FIFA got in a bit of a loop there, stuck with Raul Jimenez running into uh, Moutinho or Potence, whoever that was. So we're just going to break down the video in our own highlight. Now they're trying to play it out of midfield. Easy tackle there for Moutinho, who draws in the defender, waits for the overlapping run of Pedro Neto, who with his weak foot fires it across to Jimenez, who fairly acrobatically, which is a, that, it just looks so difficult to do. I guess if it was coming the other way, you could probably steer it a bit easier, but coming at you like that, almost kicking it at your own head, that is an incredible finish. And though I guess it is with probably within reach of Amy Martinez, but with that much speed on the ball from that distance, not much he could do. And just like that, would you believe it? It's 3-0 to the Wolves. Oh, and our tackle has put him through. They've gone forward one time and they've made it 3-1. Is the comeback on with 20 minutes to go? 
I think where it went wrong was Dendonka did sprint over to the other side trying to close down an attack. Uh, didn't quite get a hold of it which left an overload over on this side. Uh, good tackle, we thought we'd got their attack petered out but unfortunately the tackle did put that uh, new signing we spoke about, Remo Freuler, through on goal for 3-1. Disappointing to concede especially when we seemed like we had it under control there with uh, I think it was Roman Sace making the tackle. Though you'll see here, as they're, uh, as they're pressing all of our players a bit harder, this is exactly what happened uh, in that recorded match against... Uh, was it Watford? Yeah, exactly what happened in that match against Watford. As we've got Dendonka through on goal here. Can't finish. Oh my gosh. He got, he got himself a goal as I've just noticed in the top corner you cannot see the names or the score for whatever reason this game is incredibly broken a lot of the time. Uh, as I was saying, uh, up against, uh, like against Watford, uh, as soon as it hits about the 70-75 the minute mark, they just actually decide to start pressing and trying to come forward. And it does leave us a little bit stretched at times. I'm not sure why Dendonk is still this far forward, although he's Got a man over in the far post, Trinchao straight at the keeper. A great cross with the weak foot there by Dendonka. Finds the man, the open man as well, with a f just about a free header. Not his strong suit, I guess you could say, but with that kind of a chance as they're offside they're attacking. Uh, I think that's meant to be Ollie Watkins. Uh, with a free header from that distance, you'd hope he could put it either side. And do we have our names back up the top? We do! clock winding down here and hopefully with them needing two goals to get a point out of this or as John begins through oh great save by Saar well, eventually dealt with I think you could say and Pedro Neto has been played in here oh but Ezri Konza that time has defended very well recovering against Pedro Neto and that's it. It's a 3-1 win for Wolves away at local rivals Aston Villa. We've got ourselves three points moving up in the table. I think it, I think it was about fifth we could have moved up to. If so, those fixtures in between and this final first victory in a recording are turning the season around. Just quickly taking a look at the goals. Ruben Neves off the back of a corner floats it towards the back post where Raul Jimenez dominates Matty Cash in the air firing it just to the left of Emmy Martinez who cannot keep it out 1-0 to Wolves then after 64 minutes played it back to the edge of the box where Pedro Neto drew in Ezri Konza then brought it onto his left peg his better stronger stronger left foot fired it just into the side netting past Emmy Martinez for 2-0. Things got even better just after that. Straight from the kickoff, we won the ball, ran it down the other end, and Raul Jimenez grabbed himself a second goal. He has been absolutely incredible this year, Raul Jimenez, this time with an acrobatic, probably impossible finish, past Emmy Martinez yet again, 3-0, and at that point, three points. They did grab a consolation as we did uh, think we had won the ball, so they ended up having an overlap on one side of the pitch. Roman Sace made the tackle against Danny Ings, which unfortunately split the difference between Moutinho and Connor Cody, giving it to Remo Freuler. Puts it down in the side netting, great first time finish, he's done very well, nothing uh, Jose Sarr could do. but. So 3-1, it did finish. We are up into fourth in the league. Uh, next video, I think what we'll come back for is uh, here against West Ham. At this point, top four rivals, uh, which I'm not sure will last till the end of the season. Especially when you look at our December. Liverpool, City, Chelsea and Arsenal all within December. But that's well in advance. Uh, next video will be 
West Ham United, I guess they are big in the news at the minute. The cat is out of the bag with how good they are. So thank you very much for watching this episode. Please make sure to leave a like, comment down below what you thought of the game, whether you thought the highlights uh, against Newcastle were the better option than the, the usual style of highlights we've been doing, uh, whether you think John McGinn's going to be a good signing, if that is the direction we go in. Uh, make sure to follow the socials, they're down in the description, there's Twitter, the Instagram and uh, Twitch should that ever become a thing. And until next time, when we go again and keep our top four push alive, peace.